people who work hard to bring us there. Let us be those people who will do the work. Hey guys, welcome to the Matt's Random Thoughts YouTube and I am here to tell you the lowdown on the first day of the Philippine Game Developers Expo or VGDX. And this event is quite a rather special one to me because it is the very first time ever that I got a proper media accreditation to cover this event. and. I myself am a connoisseur of all things independent. I'm not really a much of a gamer, but I do love anything that's crea well created and independent. And it's it really got me to cover this event. And I think that for being the first event of its kind here in the country, I'd have to say that it's so far it's very well organized because I've only been there for the first day which is yesterday. Today is a Saturday. It's day two and I'm currently recording this. So I'm hanging up my, my media pass and uh, taking a little break. And I'm also uh, taking the time to do this. Give you a vlog a rundown of the stuff that's been going on. So let me tell you a little bit about this event. Now this event is organized by a software publishing company called the CBC and Perspective in cooperation with the Game Developers Association of the Philippines and the goal of this event is to uh, well there may have been many gaming events and conventions in the Philippines in the past but for the first time this the spotlight is being thrown on in all independent creators and they brought uh, they brought together some of the finest names in the gaming industry in Asia and around the world basically it's to showcase the Philippines as a rising video game producing destination and for uh, top companies to invest in game in Filipino game creators so this is more of a business centric convention but there really is more to just the business side there is something for the gamers because there is a lot of demonstrations of indie games there's a lot of cosplay there there are also showcases of like awesome gaming tech so there is something here for everyone there's also an artist alley which I'll probably go to on the third day and I'll make a separate video on that so uh, let me uh, run you through how everything ran here's the opening remarks from part of the opening remarks from the head of the Department of Trade and Industry because of course you gotta start on the business side and start with like some of the government agencies responsible for trade um, start pitching the Philippines to the world and for these indie game creators to uh, like get to know how all this stuff works and what the incentives are to help uh, bring these indie game creators to the global stage times yung mga important partners. So, but first of all, of course, I'd like to thank, um, to thank the organizers for giving our office the opportunity to share what we do and what we aim to achieve in the Export Marketing Bureau in support of the Game Development Center. So, um, for those who are, of you who are next slide, for those of you who are not familiar with the Export Marketing Bureau, we're an office under the Department of Trade and Industry. Our mandate is to oversee the development promotion and monitoring of Philippine exports. I'd like to emphasize that we're more than a trade promotions office. We work with agencies like the Board of Investments and Department of Agriculture as the people who work hard to bring us there. Let us be those people who will do the just that. So the DTI Export Marketing Bureau always stands ready to assist your companies and the entire game development sector in our exporting journey. Again, 
maraming salamat po yung Next up on the agenda, we've got a presentation from the Game Developers Association of the Philippines called Youth Can Make It Happen. It aims to encourage students to go into game development using the initiatives of the trade group. Let's watch part of it. Yeah, just exploring to I see cool about something. Hey, you guys made it. It's exciting, right? This is the heart of everything. Yeah. So, how's it feel to see it first time? What? Very excited, you know? But how does it all work? Can you teach me? I want to make something. Me too. But I don't know if I want to cool. <laughs> Don't worry, there's a lot that goes into making a game, and coding is just one part of it. We've got a job for nearly everyone. Artists, musicians, developers. There are a lot of opportunities for people with all talents and interests. And without them, we wouldn't have a game. Oh, listen to me going on. How about I just show you? Every game that publisher and studio may have their own way of doing things. But one thing remains the same. Every game begins with a dream. And game development is about making that dream a reality. Artists, animators, video editors, and writers who take those ideas and create vibrant worlds and characters. And developers who bring those worlds to life. And hey, did you know that many of your favorite fighters were made with the help of talented Filipinos? Oh, I've played this game before! You mean to tell me a Filipino studio made this? That's awesome! And that is correct. Behind every game is an amazing team of people. And with some hard work and dedication, you can be one of them. So you've got to work harder. Well, thankfully, we've done a bunch of really great schools that can teach you what you really need to know. So, the next game is about to begin. Are you in? There were two more rather interesting panels in the afternoon. Namely, there was one panel which gave an overview of the Philippine gaming industry. And right after, there was a panel about women in gaming. Both very interesting conversations. And here is some parts from those. Um, as an aspiring 3D and uh, 3D artist, they're hired. <laughs> 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 
publications and such. Knowing that different countries have their own publishing uh, companies like Square Enix, Naughty Dog. Will the Philippines ever have its uh, firm? Will the Philippines have a chance to have its firm? Under the Arise Plus Games. Will it be able to develop its first ever AAA Filipino game? Probably in the future. Nasa roadmap yan. Nasa roadmap yan. That is in the works right now. It's, a, it, it's something that we can't share, but definitely we're, we're all thinking the same thing. When is that triple A, triple I going to come out of the Philippines, right? And for everyone out there, I think this is the best opportunity for you guys to understand, right? We're all thinking the same thing. And there are many of us in the Gita, all of us in the Gita, who are really spending every day, every extra moment of our time trying to make that happen. So are we trying to make Triple A games happen? Yes, maybe Triple I first, right? But definitely after Triple I, we're on the Triple A. Publisher? Definitely, yes. I mean, what that, what that really have, that's definitely something that's going to happen, especially now. Think about publishing is not as complicated as it was back in the days of Level Up and Ragnarok. The about its physical distribution in the Philippines. Right now, all you really need is a company that's very, very well versed in marketing, right? And promoting your game. And there's so much of that expertise that happens in the Philippines, not just in the video game industry alone. So it's about tapping other industries, right? And trying to make sure that we get those expertise. But I'm telling you now, publishing is probably the easiest. Ah, oh. ah, Again, <laughs> so I'm the optimist. Uh, something more, like something that's involved in, with the development of the actual games. So I became a, um, a QA for Secret Six. <laughs> and then after that, I wanted to go back to my uh, roots in uh, arts because I was a visual communication major. Uh, I was a concept artist for Synergy, 88. <laughs> And then after that, I wanted to just draw for myself and not for clients. So I tried to be a producer for Pixel Mafia, and uh, six years later, I'm still here with them. So uh, yeah, thanks, Lexi. <laughs> all right. So it's very interesting to note that we all had like very, very different backgrounds heading into the gaming industry, and I'm sure that a lot of people can relate to this in the sense that we're. Well, in the midst of the excitement of the Women in Gaming uh, panel, I was able to run into the head, the president of the Game Development Council of the Philippines, Alvin Juban. He's one of the big guys behind this event, and I asked, you know, his opinions about, about it. Well, I do have to say that uh, I have to apologize because... The first part is video, but the second part of the interview is audio only because at the time I did not have a decent working SD card on my phone and the internal memory just maxed out. But anyway, at least it's better than nothing. So, introduce yourself. Hi, I'm James Lowe. So, yes. I'm, I'm the president so, of the Game Development Association of the Philippines. Uh, I'm also the CEO of Tactile Studios. Uh, we do game development, we do animation, uh, we, we do uh, outsourcing, and we also do our own games. How do you feel about day one of this event, considering that... Uh, how, how do I feel? I feel very excited. Uh, we, it was supposed to be a smaller event, and it turned out to be uh, two, twice the size, and that we actually got a lot of people to come. So I'm very, very happy. I actually never expected it. Uh, I did not expect it for yeah. the first outing. So, I mean, you, this is the first time you're doing this. But uh, are you a bit nervous? How are you feeling about it? A bit nervous considering that, uh, you know, the events that conspired, like, of course you remember Conquest, right? So how do you feel about venturing to do this for the first time? My kinakabaka ba? Or my excitement? No. No, we feel we, very confident. Uh, we, we partnered up with, the, uh, with, the events, with our events partner who actually have, has a lot of experience in terms of uh, running and organizing events like this. Oh. I, I'd be very worried if we didn't do that. But, uh, but so at least we have a pretty good coordination. And what do you think everybody here, all the game stars, because I've been to some of them and they're amazing. Sorry, what was the question? What do you think of the indie game stars that are here for this festival? I mean, it is, I mean, I, I was impressed by some of their games. Which I was really your favorite? Them. What would you say? Which was your favorite so far? Uh, 
I'm uh, the, the fact checker one. It looks very cute. This All right, look here. Um, well, we're very happy with the turnout. Uh, the, 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 the over 40 uh, uh, indie game studios actually uh, came out and they basically showcased their stuff. I would have wanted more, actually, if we could have 100 uh, in the next outing, maybe next year, that would be better. Or but, maybe if you go to Visayas or Mindanao or take this show on the road. Uh, yeah. I, think, I believe that's a better thing, you know, not just for the Metro Manila crowds maybe you can bring this to like yeah. Baguio or to like Cebu for the for the folks outside of Manila we, we actually do a lot of uh, outreach in those areas oh. uh, in a couple of months we're going to be in Baguio uh, we just came from Cebu cool. uh, a couple of months uh, sometime last year we just came from Naga wow we're even going to be in Chargao so there's a lot of outreach that we're doing wow. the, the, the challenge is that there's, there's not a lot of studios in those areas so, uh, so one of the things that we're trying to do is grow them, create communities, create different chapters of the association there, yeah, and I so think, they can grow from there. And I think that's, in my opinion, that is a lot more important now with events like this. Because uh, after, you, you've seen now what went wrong with Conquest, right? Because, uh, well, uh, I, I think the the fun uh, Akaderina did, did the best that they can. Um, I think that there that there was just so much so much. I mean, um, well, so, uh, there, there were challenges that they had to go through. And, well, I guess there were misunderstandings and misconceptions. Hey, hi, 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 hi! Thanks for coming. Metro Maraming, but at least this you try to understand and listen to the audience, no? Absolutely. Uh, it's all about listening to people and, uh, and your, your, your market, your audience. Uh, I'm sure they'll do better next time. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, what are you plan? So what? How will you plan to move forward if this one is really successful, which I can pretty tell right now. Unang araw pa lang. Um, how are you going to fix this, and improve this, and make it bigger and better over time, organically? Or more content, bottom line. Uh, more content uh, for, from, uh, that are from the Philippines, more original uh, games. Uh, even, and then bring in more, more uh, people from the international um, uh, stage. But what I really hope for is, you know, greater communications between the con goer and the organizer, which is you. Are you, and I noticed that you're beginning to establish that already. Um, how does that work? Uh, in terms of connecting with the with the con goers? Yes, and trying to get their feedback. To yeah. Okay. Bottom line, we, we the, the idea is to actually uh, keep, keep uh, communication lines open. Uh, we have our associate social media house people can just uh, uh, connect with us there and then ask um, basically give us their feedback or um, just like very similar to you you can just approach me and give your feedback and happy to actually uh, put action into that at some point yeah I mean I believe that this I mean this has a lot of potential you know um, there's there is I never realized that there's this giant scene here in the country and maybe you might want to try expanding organically rather than try so talk about the organic growth and how how do you feel about this um, um, it's it's more like we're, we're, we're supporting or, organic growth at, uh, while uh, bringing more people from the international scene because uh, there's, there could be growth here but if they do not have the support or the investment or the partnerships for, for, from the uh, international organizations uh, it's gonna be hard for them to actually profit well I guess this is probably why uh, you brought in some some of the major people here absolutely uh, instead of it's very hard to meet meet with these people when you go internationally so what we've done is uh, make it easier for the local developer the local studio to meet up with them so basically what you're doing is that um, since these folks don't many of them nasa college pa nasa high school pa hindi pa nag graduate ng college so of course college students have to be very frugal so you're doing a good thing by bringing opportunities to them right instead of them coming to the opportunities uh -huh. 
Uh, at, the, at the end of the day, they need exposure, they need the opportunity. So we're doing our best to actually bring them that opportunity um, so that they're better prepared uh, and they get to learn, they're more equipped to succeed in their chosen industry. So are you hoping that this will soon become like a premier destination event for like the gamers and and to put the Philippines in the global stage? Yeah, absolutely. That's uh, that's the plan. So we just have to, we have to we have to take a number of small steps, baby steps, to get to the bigger mm -hmm. goal. So yeah. Yeah, I, I do believe in you. I believe that you are really taking the time to listen to everyone. Kaya there's this panel happening now, this women in gaming. It's, it's quite interesting and very interactive. And you know, I I would love to make suggestions, but I would just take up too much time. I talk too much. But well, this, uh, contact us on the on the social media channels. Just connect with us. You know, I have to say that um, not a bad, but not a bad run for the first. Thank you. Run. Thank you. Pretty good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, good luck. I hope you enjoy this and. Here's the more, not just here in Manila, but the rest of the Philippines as well. Absolutely. So that everyone in Visayas and Mindanao can benefit. Because it's not even the Visayas and Mindanao. Eh. But yep, we're least. helping them too. So yeah, th thank you for that. Uh, and uh, hoping to meet more of the studios and the people who uh, want to get into the industry when we visit again. Yeah, yeah hopefully bring the PGDX there and PGDX next year. I hope it's going to be good. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Right. Nice. Well, I do have to say that day one was very big for me because I was able to discover a couple of pretty cool indie games in the Indie Game Stars area. And once again, I have to say that all of them are just addictive. They're fun. I mean, some of them are dramatic. Others are kind of violent. Others seem pretty chill. But all in all, every game here at this event man it was engaging it it really caught you at the edge of your seat at the expo so first of all let's talk about the first uh indie game creator that i ran into at the event uh they've got this game called hyper and that's hyper but with p-u-r-r -R, as in the sound of a cat and this is going to be mind-boggling for some of you and this is going to be a bit of a cute idea for others but it is a futuristic cat shooter game and man man the the gameplay was epic i i i did fail a couple of times but then i got the gist of it i got the hang of it and i didn't i think i didn't take a video of it unfortunately but uh the guy behind it said that in the future once he gets this game to different platforms uh, he will add the future possibility of customizing your character to make it look like a real life cat you have so you know it's it's gonna all the more it's gonna be fun to play especially as if you can send your cat to a futuristic world the next indie game that I want to highlight here is a pretty a pretty fun one but not just that but it is a pretty relevant one and this game is called Mr. and Miss Info and it's originally a college thesis project in association with a local library but but it is it's really really cute and intuitive because it aims to it aims to help school children get a sense of discerning real information and fake information something that i think is really timely right now in this day and age where so many of us are connected on social media hello i'm elisa lamberger i'm a game artist from let's go this is our game mr and Ms. info which is a point and click uh, game that teaches you that is a simulator for fact checking information and teaching people how to so how does this work? Um, you start with a well, you can start a new game here. Okay. And between these two characters, they each have special abilities. So you can choose either one. I'll try this. So there's a total of ten days that you can get through. Wow. Uh, and then here's the tutorial. Okay. Oh. 
Okay. Next up here, we have a visual novel game called OMG Cat. This is where you befriend some cats in your neighborhood, get to know what things they like and dislike, and basically build friendships with felines in the area. And this is OMG Cat, a visual novel game where you go around the neighborhood each day and like uh, befriend these cats that are scattered around the neighborhood. And in the end, there's a story. Oh! This almost looks very much like animatics I watch on YouTube. You know, the Hamilton animatics or what? Our artist is very good. <laughs> oh, yes, that reminds me of someone. Amity of the Owl House in season one. Do you know the Owl House? Uh, unfortunately. Oh, but, but this is... What is the game about? Uh, it's a visual novel and it's about these cats that are scattered around the neighborhood and like there's a whole story to it. Oh, okay. I... Now, how does this... What do I do here? Oh, you can pick up like stuff in the ground oh. and you can give them to the cats. You can like spam, you can spam them to cats to gain hearts. Like, oh. yeah, they're, in, they're infinite in the back. Ooh. And if you have three or more hearts, you can uh, click the cat and pet him. Sometimes there's options that make you lose Whoa. hearts. If you lose hearts, then uh, the game will end, but you can restart it. Oh, so you're losing hearts because you're annoying the cat. Yeah. Like, this is the timer. It will show you if uh, how much like moves you have left. Mm. If it goes to there's zero, a, there's a task. I mean, whoa, there's, whoa, there's something whoa. you're supposed to do. Sorry? Wait, you're, there's something you're supposed to do at each level with a cat. Oh. Yeah, you have to like befriend them first before you move on to the next stage. Oh, okay. You've already done that. Try something else. No, it's working! Yeah, a lot oh, of people. So you do keep that. giving over yeah. and over. Oh, okay. It's, it's happening! So it's not just a one time gift uh -huh. of mouse. And yep. Oh, okay. Oh. Um, uh, do you mind if I yeah, sure. use this? Because it's, I know this is gonna offend some people, but uh. <laughs> Well, never mind. Uh, ito, ito na lang. Uh, ito na lang. Uh... Oh, okay, so the goal is to befriend cats. Yep. Like a visual novel. Feels, it feels very good. Yeah, you can just bring him. Honestly? This, oh, there we go. Honestly, this would would be like what you have outside. You'll see the sticky expo. They're gonna love this. I don't have any still photos of the next game I'm going to showcase. So as a placeholder, I'll give you this picture of me and a pretty beautiful Genshin cosplayer. Anyway, the next game is called Fall Up, which in my opinion is probably one of the best games I've ever seen in this con in this event, largely because it's a combination of Mario and Fall Guys. By the way, it, it had some bugs, but what I really liked about it is that, you know, it's it's a really fun thing. Watch it. Fall Up is a 2.5D platformer where you use your enemies to overcome obstacles. Oh, so yes. You're constantly... Um, you're constantly manipulating your enemies, tricking them, deceiving them, so you can um, pass through the levels. I like Mega Man. Mega Man is That's the intro cutscene if you wanna skip it. My own favorite Mega Man then. You may, you may use the controller, or, but you're holding it. Oh. It's actually good for one handed keyboard. Oh. Genshin? Genshin meets Fortnite. 
Oh. How? It puts, it puts both elements together. Possibly, yes, in some ways. A bug. A bug. Dig up a guy. All the best game worlds merge together. Genshin Impact. Genshin. You got Mario. You got Genshin, and you got Fortnite. Yeah. They're, they're here. This one. No, oh. oh, this one. Uh, Okay, thank you very much for playing. Well, here's another multiplayer indie game I'd highly recommend. This one's called Eat the Rich. So what is this? This is Sorry. Okay, so this is Eat the Rich. It's a uh, social game, a social online party game for six to ten people. So the whole point of this game is for you guys to play it together and have fun. So are you familiar with the game uh, Among Us? It was all the rage. Yeah, so everyone, so everyone played it knows, during the right? pandemic. So it's like a moment. The but there's a uh, big difference is that there's no killer in this game. So it's like um, if you're also familiar with Squid Games. Oh. So it's a, it's a reverse Squid Game. But wait, why is it called to Eat the Rich? So is eat it, the rich does it have any anti corporation agenda? Well, not really. Because the, the premise of the game is that the world has been thrown into disarray because of the greed of the billionaires caused an um, environmental collapse. So that's the reason um, our, um, our setting is in a dystopia wherein the world is on. You are on top of buildings because the water level rose. Very timely considering the, 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 the screen actors field strike and how they're putting emphasis on like the greed of the corporations. Yeah, so and now all the billionaires are being forced to play this game, this deadly game called Eat the Rich. So you can play it. You can use this one. Um, can you record? Yeah, sure. So how this works? Okay. So first you can try customizing your look here. Yeah, so just this is the main button. So yeah, press that one. So there's only two buttons, this one and this one. This one is to drop or cancel and this one to select. This one, this one. Please use the analog stick. Yeah. Hi. You can start the game. Okay, so the goal is so here. Yeah. The goal is to put the items that is being shown in the depository. So like yeah, bread, you can deposit it there. Just press this one. This one is one. There. Deposit it there. This one. You press this one, yeah. To deposit. Huh? Here, here. So you go here. You to the arrow and then deposit it. X there. So you can drop. 
love that. You get stunned. So to get more items, step on the middle plate. There you go. So the concept of the game is that um, the the world has been thrown into this uh, environmental dystopia. Okay. But because of the greed of the billionaires. Okay. So that's why it's called Eat the Rich. Oh. Because we're supposed to be the billionaires, which is gonna be you, the player. So the billionaires is being thrown into this game. Oh, so you're a billionaire. Yeah, you're a billionaire. Yeah. So it's like um, you're the billionaire being thrown into this game, and then you're being forced to compete with each other. Oh, and, okay. And um, so it can be a multiplayer game. It I is a multiplayer game. Yeah. Oh, okay. So it's an online it. party game for six to ten people. Oh, okay. Yes. That's nice. And then um, the goal is that to get as much pennies as you can, to get as much coins as you can. Throughout the game, so yeah, for this game, that's because of their um, rivalry right now. Um, so you can reveal it by. Um, so what will happen? This is just a small part of the game. This is just a demo. This is the start of the game. So the total points that you have will convert into pennies. Okay. So the pennies that you have, you will have to protect that penny from the end of the game. Because each round, one person gets eliminated. And oh, you know, it's like a survival. Yeah, it's like survival. Game. Yeah, it's like an Among Us in the middle of survival. Oh yes. Yeah, I can play with you if you want. Stop recording now. Uh, stop. And I end this day one showcase with one of my cousin's innovations. He's got a pretty cool uh, mobile game, which is essentially an upgraded version of Tower Defense. Well, that's it for my day one explorations. In just a moment, I will be giving you a musical interlude from another convention that was next door, followed up by highlights from day two. Yeah, uh, Tower Cards, um, this is a very raw prototype. It's a one-week prototype, but uh, it's a tower defense game and uh, it's a deck builder as well. So you defend the castle uh, with the cards and uh, each time you cast the card, you spend mana. And as you um, earn more gold, you can unlock more cards, which is the deck building mechanic. And uh, after a while, you have a whole deck of wow. power cards, and then you can draw it as well. You just need to defend the castle. It's a very simple oh. game, but it's a very mechanic heavy game. Oh! Yeah. Oh, it's kind of like plants versus zombies. But yeah, but, it's, but it feels very, very nice. So, a lot of these games are based off of. Off of Filipino ideas, no? Sorry? A lot of these games are based off of Filipino ideas, no? For this, uh, I guess not it's quite. Okay. Not it's quite. Right. But uh, I am still building the story for this, but uh, this not quite. But uh, most of my other games are based on Filipino stories. I'll try it out later. She wants to drop it. She's also a developer. Oh! oh. There. <laughs> So those games were based on um, Filipino like games, like yeah, Latona. Like that, Lato, Lato. This, is, uh, this is my newest uh, mobile. This is already available in the Cool! Yeah, in download. So At this... least it's online, it's a virtual one because the actual ones are really so annoying. You know, so this is the some of these you showcased at Conquest no, and yeah, at yeah, other yeah. venues. How did people react to these when so at your other out. conventions? But then there's a rhythm to it. You need to find a rhythm. But to get it, um, it's easy. I can demonstrate. Right? Oh, he can, de she, he can demonstrate. Yeah, that would be a lot better than the actual one because the actual one is so annoying. <laughs> Some people wanted it banned at conventions. Because <laughs> it's really loud. But so, at uh, least you can play this on your own. Yeah. I actually there. Oh, okay. So there's a rhythm to it, but now once you get the rhythm, it's easy. So yeah. So you have to do it as many times as possible. Yeah, and then there's a rhythm. Okay. And then you can also unlock uh, a lot of skins. Uh, 